Block digital asset news take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today I want to talk to you about what I think is the most difficult thing to do in cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And that one thing that is so difficult is to actually sell. Now um, we've gone through this uh, at length and we've talked about all the great things to um, dollar cost average, value cost average, go all in, all those things. And uh, for me, uh, moving forward, I find this to be one of the most difficult things to actually do. And I just want to run some things by all of you uh, just to uh, show you what I'm doing right now to make sure that uh, I stick to the plan and I change my perceptions as more data comes in. So we'll get into all that. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. I like to go over the market just to see what's, uh, you know, as a point of reference, because it's always interesting as people come back to these videos, you know, in a week, two weeks, uh, you know, year, they're like, wow, Bitcoin was only X. So today, Bitcoin is only $58,100. And it's uh, February 21st, high noon, El Paso, Texas time. So uh, pretty good day. Uh, Ethereum is uh, teetering on the 2000 level. It's gone up, it's gone down. And uh, the reason is because round numbers, people sell. And uh, once it hits 2000, there's a lot of uh, limit orders and people sell their positions like myself. And I'll go over that about why I did that. Uh, Binance coin is number three, uh, probably because of all the utility it has in PancakeSwap and it's beating the pants off of uh, what Ethereum is doing and Uniswap and all those different DEXs because the uh, uh, rates are just outrageous. Uh, Polkadot, number four. Cardano is back to number five. Fantastic. Tether's in six. XRP is in seven. Chainlink is a whopping $34. Watch out. Uh, that's pretty good. Bitcoin Cash and everything else. So uh, it's just a nice, nice little reference. And uh, I mean, just like, I want to say this, just like a, a Binance coin and um, Huobi token, which is up 13% for the week. And then what else do we have? Like FTX token up 3%. I mean, it's just for a week or so. And then uh, like Voyager and uh, all the different uh, exchange tokens. They're up because they're utility and the things that they do and the things that they will be doing. So don't sleep on all of those uh, exchange tokens. And they're going to be very, very big for 2021 and into the future. But that's not the story for this uh, video. So let's jump into what I'm talking about as far as uh, the, the most difficult thing. And if you know my story, uh, I started this, this channel just a little over a year ago. And the reason was because I wanted to educate people on all my mistakes. And one of the mistakes that I did was I went all in at the wrong time. It's, it's, it's okay to go all in at the right time, That's, but it's very difficult to time that. Uh, Alex Becker went in like uh, on March. <laughs> he bought a ton of uh, Bitcoin right at 5,000, so congratulations to him. A lot of other people did that. Maybe you did that yourself, so congratulations. But the problem is, is, is you know, figure out, you know, when is the right time uh, to do that? And uh, I just want to make it easy on you, uh, easy on myself. I just dollar cost average or a volley cost average. I've talked about that at length. This is not the point of the video. That part's easy. We figured out how to not FOMO in and how to go, you know, just crazy and, uh, you know, uh, cash out all our positions and just dump everything in and watch it, you know, watch it go uh, down precipitously. Now, the thing is right now is that it just seems so easy, doesn't it? Like, we're like, ah, oh, I mean, it's crypto. Just put money in. It's like magic and it'll just, you know, double or triple overnight. Well, that's what's happening now because we're in this fantastic bull run. But what's going to happen as time moves on? Because guess what? What goes up must come down. And that is the truth. If you think everything is going perpetually up, you're crazy. And that's just the truth. Uh, this is not financial advice. This is just the things that I see and the things that I'm doing. So take it with a grain of salt. I still think you're crazy. All right. So moving on to what I'm talking about here as far as the exit strategy. And I've talked about this at length, done videos before. In the link in, in all my description, there's a, a link to get to these spreadsheets. And we'll just take a look at the first one. Um, this is Ethereum. And I've got an 80-20 plan. I'm going to sell at 80% of my positions in this bull run. And I'm going to hodl 20% because I think that is what is going to happen. Could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong, but this is what this is where we're at. So for 80%, as you notice right here, let me blow this up so you can actually see it. So in the 20% range, you notice that the amount of ETH to be sold is 16. Now, this is just based on uh, numbers. These are not my specific numbers, but they're just nice round numbers because I'm not good at math. 
Uh, so I thought this would be easier for everybody. So if I had a you know 100 Ethereum and I want to sell 20%, well, now we're looking at, and this is of course 20% of the 80% that I own. So I'm going to sell uh, 80% or 80. 20% uh, of 80 is 16. So I would make uh, 32,000. And, and I actually sold uh, a big chunk of, of Ethereum, 20% of my Ethereum uh, stash. And uh, it was a good day. And that's just how it is. Now, some people will say, well, Rob, don't, wasn't your price prediction at $100,000? Yes. Yes, it was. And the question is, well, why don't you just hold on? What are you stupid? Just wait till it hits ten thousand and cash off or cash out at that time. And here's the problem with that philosophy. And it looks like this. This is the Bitcoin chart on December fifteenth, two thousand seventeen. And if you notice, it's at nineteen thousand six sixty five, something like that. So when you take a look at that, you're like, oh, that's the highest it went. No big deal. Well, it was a big deal to a lot of people because remember, nice round numbers. People were expecting it to a twenty, then thirty then a million, if you listen to crazy John McAfee, and people were swept up into that narrative. And you have to understand, like back then, to me, it only made sense. I'm like, why would people go from Bitcoin into cash? That makes no sense because this is the future. Uh, you know, we talk about quantitative easing, uh, QE. We talk about money printing. We talk about, you know, sound financial principles. We talked about the uh, ever decreasing value of the dollar, the purchasing power. I'm like, well, it's just going to keep going up because it only makes sense because that's the future. Well, not so fast. This is what happened. And this is the truth. So if you think that, you know, everything's just going to keep going up because it's the future, it's going to keep going up, but there's going to be massive dips and valleys and peaks and troughs. So you have to prepare yourself over time. If you don't, here's the thing though. If you don't care about, you're like, I don't care if it goes up to a hundred thousand and drops to dollars. I just don't care because I know it's going to go up all the way. I'm not talking to you. Uh, if you want, if if you can do that, that's great. Good for you. You can do that. But I'm talking to the person right now who has put a, a, a sizable amount or is thinking about putting a sizable amount and going. You know what? Uh, I'd like to make a a pretty good uh, purchase here and have a nice little exit for myself so I can take care of my family, pay off some bills, not have to be you know working for the man so much, all that good stuff, right? So um, for those people, if you don't want to be like me and potentially lose a huge amount of the percentages, just keep watching. So this is the part that uh, I can only tell you what I'm doing. And when we talk about this, so 80-20 rule, uh, of course, is in effect. I'm going to sell 80% and go 20%. Now, the question then is, well, what are you going to do with all this money? Because if you talk about money so much and you say it's going to go, you know, it's it's on fire and the purchasing power, like you just said three minutes ago. Well, that's true. And that's why I did a video and it was called my seven tiered exit strategy. Yes, I'm going to cash out, but it's not about cashing out and keeping in the cash. That's not a great plan. It's about assets, accumulating assets. And it's not just about only digital assets. It's about diversifying. And you can check that video out. I'll link at the very end. But I said, hey, it's going to be 10% cash because cash can, you can buy, look, cash is still king. You can still buy a lot of things with cash. You can still buy properties. You can still buy land. You can still buy, do a lot of things. So we're not all cryptocurrency yet. Hold your horses. But 10% will be in cash and keep it there. 25% will be in stable coins. The reason for that is because of the yield on places like Celsius and Voyager. I talk about them in the video. 15% goes into land. 20% goes right back in investment properties. 10% goes into Amazon FBA business that I have. 15% goes into staking, all the different products that I have, and 5% goes into iTrust Capital. I wish I could put more into iTrust Capital into my Roth IRA because all the gains there, they cannot tax me on that as it goes to the moon. And what's even better about iTrust is that they have the things that you stake there as far as, because they have Ethereum, now they have Polkadot. In the next month or two, they're going to allow you to stake those cryptocurrencies, which means all of the massive gains or all the different uh, rewards that you get from those two projects, they're not taxed either. So this is why I've already maxed out this year. Uh, I maxed out last year. I maxed out this year. It's usually 7,000, sometimes it's 6,000, depending on your age, whatever else. There's a video on that. I'll link at the end. That's what I'm doing. So not to get off topic, but uh, people will always talk to me about, well, Rob, you don't understand because there's all these institutions and they're all coming in and it's going to keep going up. I might trade sideways a little bit, might go down a little bit, but it's going to keep going up forever. Okay, so that may be true. And man, I hope it's true. That'd be fantastic. But 
was talking to Alex Mascioli, did a video last week. We talked about the institutional side because he is the head of institutional services over at Bquant. And he goes, look, I know those hedge fund guys. I know the institutions and they're not going to keep forever. Michael Saylor might do that because he has a majority of stake into MicroStrategy. But as far as uh, having all the institutions and all the entities and all the different places going, you know what? We don't care what the what our, our, our shareholders say. We're just going to keep holding as it potentially goes down. I don't think that's going to happen. So when I'm talking about that, you have to understand, this is the Bitcoin treasuries. I talked about this before in that video. This is a refresher. Here's all the publicly traded companies. Here's the private companies. Here's the ETF. Like if we scroll over and we just add up all the Bitcoin, uh, you get 1.3 million. That's a ton of Bitcoin, right? So 1.3 million. Then you got to take into account that probably 2 million is lost, maybe 4 million. I have no idea, but people aren't taking into account for that. I don't know why. That's just what it is. So if we take a look at that, where's the rest of the, of the Bitcoin? Where is it? Because uh, it's not listed here. Uh, there's probably some companies that are not listed, of course, but I believe that the vast majority are a lot of old school whales or old school people that actually accumulated. I believe it's a lot of retail, just like me and you, and I believe they have their hands on it. And so if you take that into account, how many of us would hold on to Bitcoin at 250,000 and be like, you know what? I got no bills. My house is totally paid off. Uh, all the different, uh, you know, secondary houses or my child's uh, college fund will be fine. I'll just keep holding forever. Okay, I don't think that's going to happen. I think people will sell. I think those hedge funds will sell. I think the other institutions will sell, especially if they have to answer to their uh, shareholders when the shareholders go, "What the heck just happened? We just lost thirty uh, percent overnight." Because it is volatile. Could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong, but uh, that is where we're at. So. When we talk about all these things, and we're talking about where we're going, the thing about selling is that you hit that button. I just did it today, actually, uh, to sell out Ethereum. Uh, it's tough. It's tough, but I just here to remind you of you know, don't fall victim to what could potentially happen. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. I love that phrase from CJ. It's perfect. So. I don't want this to happen. This is what happened to me. And I always talk about these four-year cycles. So we got 2012, there was a halving, 2013 all-time high, dip, reset, into 2015, right? Next one, halving, 16, 2017, that thing we talked about, uh, then dip and a massive reset, right? And then in 2020, what did the same thing happen? We had a halving, we're hitting our all-time highs, there's going to be a dip and a reset in 2022 and 2023. I believe that's going to happen. So we have to look at it just like this. We are right down here. For 2021. And in all honesty, it's a pretty good time uh, to actually invest. So when we're taking a look at this, when we're talking about investing, these are the two times when it's great to invest. When this happens in like 2016, 2000, you know, uh, 12, when it was boring, and then these sideways actions, second best time is right now, right where you're at right here. And then that is all great and dandy. The thing about selling is that if I sell, then it's then these are my goals. My goals are different from your goals, right? You could be an uh, eighteen-year-old, you know, person who's like, I don't really care because I mean, I'm just going to keep holding. Well, great. Guess what? There's another four-year cycle coming right around the bend, and that's going to happen in 2024 when there's going to be another halving. So if we have another halving, then what could the price be? Well, I think personally, it's we're going to see Bitcoin go to 150k, maybe 200. And it's going to retrace back to around 30 to 65,000. That's just an updated one. I think it's where it's going to be. So if that's the case, then just keep, just keep holding on. And then maybe you want to you know, do this cash out right over here as you accumulate for three more years. But the thing is about cashing out is this basic principle. If you have a plan, stick to your plan. As other data comes in, you can modify it as you see fit. Like for me, for the Bitcoin, I'm not going to sell 80% and then 20%. It's going to be like a 50-50 split, but I am going to sell. And I'm going to sell somewhere between September and December. That is my, my goal. I just have to take a look at what's going on at that time. If I miss it, if I don't sell at the top, guess what? The chances of me selling at the top aren't that great because it's just one of those things. I sold Dogecoin at the top. For eight cents, I got lucky. 
hey, what are you gonna do? I had Doge just laying around, I'm like, eh, I gotta get rid of this. Eight cents, and then it's been down. Am I gonna hit the tops in every one of my portfolios? Absolutely not. So let's just say, sake of argument, that I make $4 million, and then I miss the top, and I miss $6 million. Would that hurt? Sure. Uh, I miss out on $2 million, but I got $4 million bucks. I mean, not so bad. And then I can do all the things that I wanna do when I'm talking about all these things, uh, where were we? Uh, back here with buying land, buying property, putting my business, staking, all those things. I just don't see you know, uh, the, the issue there. So when we talk about, again, finally not to beat a dead horse, but if we're going to sell, just make sure that you do these little micro sells so you get used to it, just like you've done micro buys of dollar cost averaging 25 bucks a day or whatever you do like me, because I'm boring. <laughs> and then uh, just try to make sure that you stick to your plan, whatever that plan is. Again, not investment advice. These are the things that I'm doing. But uh, I will tell you this. It's, it's difficult to hit that button. But if I keep doing it and I do it every so often, it's not so hard when those bigger transactions come up when I need to sell that one Bitcoin for $200,000 or $150,000. I can do it. And if I, and if I don't... If I don't practice now, then I'll never be able to do it later on. And I'll be in the same position I was in 2017 when I uh, held all the way up here and could not get my hands off of crypto fast enough. And I wrote it all the way down sideways. And here we are again. So uh, again, just what I'm doing. Anyhow, that's it for uh, today's video. Uh, I want to say if you made it all the way in, hey, thanks. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Really appreciate that. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we do are time sensitive. I'm going to do another video today about the news. I just had to put this thing out. And if you like these types of videos, I'm going to link two more up. Uh, we had two that I wanted to talk about. One was the one with Alex Mascioli where we talked about institutions. Uh, the second one I was going to link up there was about the seven tier exit strategy. So you can check those out. All right. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. See you on the next one.